Um, I live in Denver. Um, so the people that are living in these sanctioned cities, we are slowly losing control of our city, um, our cities. And the government's not doing anything. Um, Governor Polis in Colorado, he is not doing anything about the apartment complex that has been taken over by Venezuelan gang members that have come over illegally. Um, they have robbed 10 gun shops in, in Denver in the past month. They are strapping up and this is just the first step. They're seeing what they can get away with. And so far they've been in this apartment complex for a almost a month. The police can't do anything about it, haven't, we haven't brought in reinforcements. And they're just living in this apartment complex they overtook and no one's doing anything. Venezuelans is taking over. They just jacked them? Oh, me. These niggas is out here tripping. Bro, damn, they done made a mess of shit. Nigga, y'all are on bullshit out here. They is on bullshit. Oh, shit. What the f? Yeah, they're tripping. Nigga, they are. Nigga, they cracking off in the air and everything. They driving over to... Nigga, we almost just got hit. <laughs> Bro, these niggas is all bullshit. I'm trying to record, but I got to watch the... Colorado is in some trouble. They're saying migrant gang violence spills to Colorado suburbs. It's suburbs. John Fabricatori is a retired ice field director running for Congress in that Colorado district. And he joins me now. John, to be clear, Denver is the city. They voted for these sanctuary city policies, but it is a suburb, Aurora, that has to deal with them. How bad is Aurora right now? You know, the situation's really starting to get bad. Uh, you know, sanctuary jurisdiction protects criminals and not U.S. citizens. And uh, the real issue here is that there's a, a huge increase in violence in these areas in Aurora where these newly arrived foreign-born migrants, many of whom are Venezuelan, uh, have started to grow. And I think the public's just concerned that if this issue isn't stopped now, it will get worse. And uh, many people in Aurora and the surrounding communities just want to be told the truth. You know, Denver has welcomed over 42,000 migrants, costing the city more than $72 million. One of these guys from Trend de Aragua, he's a gang leader. He's called the Cookie Monster because his name somewhat translates to cookie in Spanish. But he has quite the rap sheet, assault, shooting. Yet he and his gang have been able to somehow seize multiple apartment complexes. Not one building, but complexes, like the entire thing, to run their crime ring. How does that happen, John? It happens because our government allowed it to happen. We're having problems at complex, blah, 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 blah. And then they, the, 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 the police probably never show, you know, Denver, Colorado. I'm not for sure about that suburb, but you know, that that's one of the places where they, they're talking about taking away police 
you know, they, they want to do community policing, which is nothing wrong with community policing. But when I think of community policing, I think of we hire cops that lives in our community, <laughs> not, not full on community p policing because you're saying, Hey, we don't want no police. But anyway, this is Denver, Colorado. Okay. So I'm calling 911. I need help. Where are you located? And they tell their location. Oh, we ain't going over there. <laughs> we ain't going over there. So the police don't show up. Or they don't have enough police. Or they showed up one time or two. And they was met with such vitriol from these Venezuelan gangs that has gotten out of control. And it's one of those spots like, hey, we don't come over. You know how they do in really hooded spots? Some spots in certain neighborhoods that the gang violence is so out of control, the cops just like, oh, let them kill each other. Then we show up to collect the bodies. Then, then they'll call us, oh, we got a dead body is stinking. Okay, then we'll come and process the crime scene or whatever's left of the crime scene. That's how that happens. They're, they're letting them just take over. Venezuelans, I'm just going to call them the N-word. These N words, they acting like a bunch of animals. So we just going to let them do whatever, let them kill themselves. Oh, if you still over there too, too bad, you need to find somewhere else to live. That's how that happens. I think a lot of the city leaders are just complicit. They're, they're allowing this sanctuary just to come into these, these areas and, and, they're, and, and they don't want to push back against, it. you know, sanctuary policy is a state policy here in Colorado. Aurora itself, through the Aurora City Council, has kind of pushed back on it. But we're still seeing a lot of leaders try to ignore it and not let the public know exactly what's going on. You know, these uh, many of these are, are not average asylum seekers that are coming in. Many of them cannot even claim asylum. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, there is this mix of criminal element which contains groups like the transnational criminal organization Tren de Aragua. What I love about this, and love, I mean in an ironic sense, his home country of Venezuela will not accept U.S. deportations. And why is that? Is because so many of the people that Venezuela sends us are criminals. They don't want those criminals back. Donald Trump has vowed to send them back somewhere out of the country if he's reelected. It's funny how Venezuela said, no, we, we're not going to accept any of those people that cross, cross your border. We don't want them back. They're over there for a reason. We opened up our prisons so they could be your problem, not our problem anymore. Okay. Um, one thing I want to point out, if, if you're in a, a, what do they call a safe haven city or state, that means your city does not c cooperate with ICE. That means if the illegal gets caught up in the crime or something like that, they don't call ICE. They don't call, they just, you know, they go through a regular process like they're a normal citizen or, or an American. So then they, you know, they do the crime and they release them back out on, on the street. So the problem is with this, the lawmakers or Denver is saying, hey, this is, this is what our rules are. And we don't want to blame the Venezuelans on uh, the complex being shut down. We're blaming the people that own the complex. <laughs> uh, let me just read some of this. On July the 28th, as many as 4,000 cars descended on the parking lots of Gardens of Havana Shopping Center in West Aurora, apparently to celebrate what at the time looked like a political demise of Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro. Okay, so they <laughs> they're in America celebrating, I guess, their... their um, freedom from the once dictator okay well why didn't you stay over there you had nothing to do with it this is america why are you celebrating your liberation over in america so that happened um and it says some city council members witnessed painted the uh, july 28th aurora event as a violent criminal and destructive um, a few days later, the owner of the Northwest apartment complex and his public relations agents told the media that the Venezuela gang has effectively taken over his 99 unit complex. Uh, city officials countered the claim, saying the complex is slated 
of foreclosure next week, more than two years of neglect and mismanagement. Well, we've been having this migrant issue for about three years or no, no, we could say two years because that's when Title 42 expired about two years ago. Okay, so yeah, so they're saying, hey, um, it, it's been mismanaged, creating a bevy of public safety and health violations that has left the complex uninhabitable. If I'm renting out to Venezuelan gang members and I show up or my guys show up to fix the plumbing, fix whatever, and I'm met with guns or violence, they're, they're robbing my truck. How can I get my people or the maintenance guy to service the apartment complex? So then you, uh, number one, you're going to have a labor shortage. Then you're going to tell your box, boss, no, screw you. I'm not going over there because last time I went over there, they whooped my ass or they robbed my truck. I don't got no materials in my, my truck because they robbed it. So they're, so the complex is blaming the Venezuelan gang and the, the government has said, oh, no, no, no. You've been having this problem for the last two years. Yeah, I've been having this problem for the last two years because of this. these Venezuelans been here for the last two years. Does anyone else think this is insane? <laughs> this is insane. So none of us buy that story that this is based off a of code enforcement violation. Um, this is from a council member, um, Jarinsky, said at the end of the committee meeting, referring to herself as a fellow committee members, council members. Um, the three of us believe there is a huge gang problem. While the city officials have provided extensive city and court records documenting hundreds of unsafe living conditions and police calls to the building. Okay, we have police being called to the building. Okay, so you know that it's violent. Something is wrong if we have hundreds of unsafe conditions and hundreds of police calls to the specific apartment complex. Well, you know I'm not lying. <laughs> the gangs are taking over. Why else would the police come there? I've been here over in, in the suburbs for 10, almost, no, about 11 years. Actually, 11 years now. I could count on maybe one hand, one hand <laughs> that the police was called. And I one, one time I called to myself, it wasn't because of no violence. I just had to make a report. And that's the total of this whole block. I could just say this whole complex. I'm, I'm not for sure what's going on, on on the other side of the complex, but this whole complex. So you're, you're talking about 99 families, we could say families, that inhabits this apartment complex. And they're having hundreds of police calls a year. Nobody sees a problem with that. That is, you're trying to normalize deviance. That is not normal. <laughs> this is not normal behavior. Listen to this. Kaufman distanced himself from the insertion saying that he was confident that TDA gangs were present in the metro area, but that the history of the safety violations at the embattled complex was well established and that the police have not made clear what crimes at the complex were gang related. <laughs> The problem, problem is Kaufman, whoever Kaufman is, he sounds like an idiot. The problems go way back. He pushed back against the claim by Jarinsky and Hancock Cock, that the flash mob event at the gardens of Havana was a test by the Venezuelan immigrants to schemes to repeat similar episodes in the Aurora. It is. They, they, they test in the waters. Okay, so let's see how they act. We going to fuck this shit up. <laughs> Excuse my language. Listen, we going to fuck this shit up. This is a small one. Let's see what we could get away with. We already took over the complex. We going to fuck this uh, strip mall up. And now we, we going to see. We testing the waters. Let's see if we can go someplace bigger. Maybe, maybe next time they'll uh, target the police department. Or the police headquarters downtown. Uh, Kaufman says, it's a one-off. <laughs> it's a one-off in here. <laughs> it's a one-off, Kaufman said. He said the mob appeared to be caused by early news about the Medora election by unruly and un unrelated people, not 
an event planned by an organization or gangs. This guy, you could tell this guy is an extreme liberal. Because he'll be like, oh, these are good people. These are such good people. And some Venezuela will go, stick them up. <laughs> stick them up. Pistol whoop them. <laughs> oh, you're such, you want my wallet, sir? Here it is. <laughs> These are gang members. I don't know if you ever got, if you guys ever watched, you know, how they be running across the border. And this is in Texas when, you know, they run across the border. You never see like women and children. These are military age men. <laughs> That's running across the border. This is this is the villains. Of, they made their way up to Denver, Colorado. This Venezuelan gang, and they took over this complex. And it says Aurora Police Deputy Chief Chris Jewell said uh, police were certain that the immigrants associated with the TDA gangs are present in the metro area, but the extent of the involvement in the local crime is under investigation. Um, we're working diligently on that, Jewel said. An internal police task force has been created to focus on the issue. We are learning a lot about this community. Yeah, you know, you got to get somebody to speak the language, number one. And then number two, um, you just need to deport their ass. Stop, stop protecting people that want to do harm to your American citizens and kill whoever invested into that complex. They killing their American dream. They kill, they're killing their American dream. Now their complex is about to get closed. The, the complex is probably not paid off. They said they have faced evictions next week. They, they actually, this was a week ago. So they, they probably already faced evictions. So now you created another problem. Now you have homeless gang Venezuelans ro running the streets or roaming the streets. What do you think they're going to be doing? It's not winter time yet, so it's, it's probably they could find a bridge somewhere, set up camp. But Venezuela uh, weather is not the same as Colorado. It's going to be cold. What do you think they're going to be doing in the near future? Robbing, killing, and stealing. Breaking in, squatting in people's homes. So that's another problem that they cause with these illegal immigrants. They're not migrants. They're illegal immigrants. Illegal aliens. So that's that. You guys put it in the chat. Let me know what you think. This is what you call a bad thing.